In the mid-1990s, Honda designers had an idea. Let's make a small car which will look like an SUV, but it's going to be frugal because nobody's going to take it off-road anyway. And that's how Honda HRV was conceived. I think it was one of those cars which came to the market a decade or so too early. So, Honda had a good idea but launched it too soon. The first generation was manufactured during the years 1999-2005 and later during the global financial crisis nobody noticed that small crossovers are becoming increasingly popular the new hrv comes to a market full of similar cars what does honda have to offer that others don't a few words about the car itself honda hrv is built on the same platform as the jazz albeit extended to account for longer wheelbase just like jazz also hrv is very roomy inside for the segment it is in when it comes to size, HRV is close to Mitsubishi ASX or Nissan Qashqai. These are compact crossovers and HRV is still a B-segment SUV. From this perspective, you shouldn't be put off by the €20,000 starting price. Yes, the competition has a significantly lower base price, but Honda comes with a lot of equipment as standard. The boot is around 450 liters. Also here, the HRV is going into the compact crossover territory. Unfortunately, there are no shopping bag hooks, but there is a 12 volt socket regardless of the trim level. In the back, Honda's magic seats, which let you carry larger items. Fold the back seats and you get a flat loading surface. There is good legroom and headroom, as you can see. I'm 175 centimeters tall. The driver's seat is set to my driving position. Now, there is a place for a bottle of water in the door bins, but only a small one. Also here in the center, there is a place for a small bottle of water. But if you want to use the 12 volt socket, which is here behind it, well, you can't hold any drinks there, can you? There is a pocket in the passenger seat, in the back of the passenger seat, and there are two Isofix mounts on the side seats. The only problem I can see is for the kid who's in the child seat, uh, the windowsill is rather high, so the kid might not be able to see outside very well. And an adult sitting here, I might have headroom here, but over here, I'm starting to touch the roof. So that's not very comfortable, but then it's not a big deal. Let's go to the front. A lot is happening in the front, perhaps too much. There are too many textures and styles. The speedometer has a 3D look and you don't want to look at it for too long, especially from the passenger's side, if you have motion sickness. And then there are shiny infotainment and AC panel elements. The car has over 20,000 kilometers on the clock and there are already many scratches. The floating center console also has surfaces, which used to be piano black, but are now scratched piano. At first glance, there is no place for your bits and pieces, but that's not true. There is a shelf at your ankle level with all 12 volt and USB ports. And there is a place for your smartphone at thigh level. It took me a while to get used to it, but it's not a bad solution. Cup holders are hard to clean, but they do fit small as well as large bottles. But you simply cannot use armrest storage while driving. The HRV has a lot of adjustment in the steering wheel. That's if I can find it. There you go. Up and down, back and forth. And uh, you can also adjust the seat height. And it just keeps going and going and going like that Energizer Bunny, you know. I'm still not in the top position, so I'll just keep pumping down so I won't bore you. But yeah, there is a lot of adjustment, so I think everyone can find a comfortable and uh, proper driving position for him or herself. By the way, do you know what's the difference between a good and bad car interior? Well, this one is properly put together. I mean, this car has 20,000 kilometers on the clock. It's solid. Nothing squeaks and rattles. And this is what makes a good, solid car interior. Honda is known for making solid car interiors, and I will always praise Honda for that. To use the infotainment system to its full extent, to install apps and such, you need to be a registered user. I couldn't find information about app size, so if you don't want surprises, better copy them from your computer on a pen drive. For the internet radio, the developer says you'll need at least 2GB data plan. 
Basic functions like radio, Bluetooth streaming and hands-free set work without a hitch, but the interface looks dated, like first Android tablets. On top-spec models, you get a reversing camera, sat-nav and keyless ignition. On a mid-spec like this one, you get front and rear parking sensors. You can order sat-nav as an option. But to start the car, you still have to use a good old-fashioned key. Hyundai HRV may have 185 mm ground clearance, that's for the petrol version and the 170 mm for the diesel, but in Europe it's only front wheel drive. Honda claims most buyers will go for front wheel drive anyway when choosing a small crossover. This is the 1.5i VTEC, which takes the HRV from 0 to 100 km per hour in just below 11 seconds. It has 130 horsepower and 155 newton meters of torque. Nothing to write home about, really, especially with the green halo around the speedo. That's your eco nanny. It disappears if I press the accelerator too hard. However, should I drop a gear or two, or three? Honda goes into high revs. Oh, it loves to be revved, this one. <laughs> it's like the old Hondas, the good old Hondas that like to be kicked about. Yeah! Oh, yes. Okay, okay. But if you're not into driving like a lunatic and stick to the Eco Nani instructions, you should be able to get about six, six and a half liters per 100 kilometers in a combined cycle. The manufacturer claims about five and a half liters of petrol. The CVT will get you a bit better gas mileage. Uh, Honda claims with the CVT, the HRV will be about 10% more frugal. And if you don't want the petrol because you drive a lot or your taxes uh, are high for the petrol engines, you can go for the 1.6 diesel, which we know from the Civic. Up to about 120 km per hour, the HRV is relatively quiet. Above that speed, engine noise becomes obtrusive. Surprisingly, there is no wind noise around these big side mirrors, which, by the way, give good visibility. Visibility, uh, yes, across my shoulder is a bit, actually not a bit, it's obstructed like hell by this big C-pillar. It's a problem when reversing out of a parking spot, so I wouldn't mind having one of these uh, cross-traffic reversing warning things. Honda doesn't offer that, unfortunately. It offers a plethora of uh, other safety systems. So, for example, regardless of the spec level, uh, you get things like um, hill assist, active city braking, tire pressure monitoring system. Mid and top spec models also get collision warning system, road sign recognition, lane assist. That's the one that beeps like a madman. See? That's why I keep it turned off. And uh, you also get automatic headlights. There is also the intelligent speed limiter, which is so intelligent I can't fathom it. It's supposed to adjust the speed to whatever it says on the road sign. Honda HRV may look interesting, and it is practical, and it is solid. But as far as driving it goes, there's nothing that makes me particularly want to sort of get into it every day and do my commute or take a weekend trip in it. It's, it's a car, okay? So the steering is precise enough, the gearbox has a short enough throw, the suspension... Ah, the suspension is actually a bit too harsh for a family car and uh, you can feel it especially when sitting in the back. But on the other hand, Honda expects the HRV buyer to switch from a compact car or from a minivan perhaps. So to them, a crossover will be a whole new adventure. And if you'd like to make your Honda a bit more interesting, there are also some styling packs which include a chrome pack, an aerodynamic pack and an off-road look pack. Yeah, they're all styling packs. But the good news is that Hondas are generally reliable and with this 1.5 naturally aspirated petrol engine, I mean, nothing can go wrong. With a bit of luck, it's Hakuna Matata for as long as you own it.
Honda HR-V is big enough to compete with compact crossovers, and that's a good thing, but it's also significantly cheaper, and that's also a good thing. Although, to me, it lacks character, but that's what I think about most crossovers these days. However, if you trade in your boring station wagon for the HR-V, you should be more than happy. And what do you think about the Honda HR-V? Or maybe you've got some other little crossover that you really like. Let me know in the comments below. Share, rate and subscribe to my channel. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.